So what's up, guys? So, I wanted to do this video because there's actually a lot to talk about. And I'm going to try to keep it as brief as I can because, again, I've still got four days left on my, uh, as of this recording, still left on my community strike. So I still have to keep it under 15 minutes. And that's going to be awfully hard to do. So if I run into that issue where I can't keep my mouth shut under 15 minutes, then this will turn into a part two. So uh, we'll figure that out when we get to the end of this video. Um, but essentially, everybody is aware at this point of what happened on uh, June 13th, 2016 happened in Orlando, Florida. Um, first of all, uh, the incident that occurred with Christine uh, Grimmy, I believe it was her name, uh, tragic loss of life. You know, it's just really, that that's just a really sad thing. Talented girl taken way too soon, had such a, you know, bright future ahead of her. That's really sad. And I don't want to take away from that, but the real issue that I'm here to talk about was the shooting in Orlando at the uh, nightclub. Now, there's been a real divide, and I said jokingly, and that's kind of ironic considering the serious nature of this, that this would essentially be one of those things that would make the right wing have an aneurysm, and ultimately it has. Because right-wing Christians have essentially been uh, calling out the gay people, basically saying how everywhere from basically that God sent the, sent the gays, and the gays deserve this, and the gays deserve that, blah, 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 blah. You know, the, the hateful, homophobic rhetoric said by the right-wing Christian community is just outrageous. On the other side of the right-wing spectrum, you have the people that aren't as religious, but still just as fascist and third-positionist. And those are the Islamophobic sectors of the, of the group. And of course, then you have your people that are just completely contradictory, hip hypocritical, and moronic, are the people that are homophobic and Islamophobic. And those are the people that basically I kind of wonder what's going on in their head. It's like, like, did their mind have to explode, you know, just, to, you know, over this sort of situation? Because, frankly, it really is a decision in the right-wing community on which person do you hate, which community do you hate more of? Do you hate the gays, lesbians, trans individuals? And, or do you hate the Arabs and Muslim community? Like, which one? And I could go on a long fucking spiel on everything about the right-wing Christian community and their homophobia. I think that's already been done to death because this act itself that was committed was an act of homophobia. Now, of course, what I really want to talk about more is the Islamophobia to it. Because whether it's the right-wing Christian, whether it's certain members of the LGBT community, and with all due respect to the LGBT community, they've been through a lot. Not just from this past week's events, but they've been through a lot over the last century, frankly. And I'm not taking away with that. I'm not downing that in any way. I'm not trying to take away from their fight because obviously I've been an LGBT activist for years but the sheer Islamophobia that's been coming from the American public after this is just absolutely asinine yes the man was Arab yes the man had Islamic viewpoints from what it seems but the claim that, and that he claim, so called claimed I cannot I haven't really seen anything that to confirm this, but the man claimed at least to 
have ISIS connections. Well, just because someone claims that, I mean, someone could could claim to have KKK connections and not necessarily be, you know, fight, and not necessarily be affiliated with that. You know, they could be claimed claim to be part of some crazy Christian organization and not have any affiliation with it. And I just, the whole thing is, is that even if this man did have ISIS connections, let's take into consideration the whole fact that that lone wolf, and let's be honest, that's what it is, unless of course we want to start calling uh, Dylan Roof and the Planned Parenthood shooter a terrorist for what they did, and also the guy that blew up the uh, Target women's bathroom in Evanston, Illinois, Unless we want to call those people terrorists, well, then why should we call um, th why should we call this person a terrorist? I'm just making a point, you know. But essentially, this violent act that was committed—it's like okay, let's say this man was connected with ISIS. Let's say he is. That still only represents point oh oh one percent of the Islamic community. That represents only about, probably, again, about 0.001% of the Arab community. And to basically say, to go outright and say that this one man's actions suddenly represents the whole of Islam, it represents the whole of what the Arab community is like, would basically be saying that what Dylan Roof did, what represents all of white people, or that the Planned Parenthood shooter's actions basically represent all of Christianity. You know, kind of that same thing. It's like Westboro Baptist Church, you know, because ISIS is about as representative of Islam as Westboro Baptist Church is about Christianity. Or about how, um, what is it, the forget what the, it's some Odinist community I think it's like heathens I don't know heathens something anyway but how that's representative somehow of Norse paganism or paganism in general it's not it represents only a small slim percentage to basically go outright and try to make you know, try to twist it to make it seem like this one man's actions represent all of Islam, to make, you know, all of this representative of the Arab community, the Islamic community, would basically be like saying that Fred Phelps was representative of all white, all white male Christians. That the Westboro Baptist Church is somehow representative of all of Christianity. Because that basically is the same argument. Christianity and Islam are, in essence, supposed to be peaceful religions, but violence and misinterpretations of those religions do occur. But to blame an entire religion for, for a small, slim group of individuals and their actions is ridiculous, asinine, naive, and frankly just hypocritical. It really is. It's just frankly to basically, because if you're basically going to claim that that one group is, you know, representative just because of one person's actions, then why are you not bitching about uh, the guy that shot up Planned Parenthood? Why are you not bitching about what Dylan Roof did? Why are you not bitching more about the Westboro Baptist Church and trying to fight the Westboro Baptist Church on a battlefield? You know. Apparently, it just seems like there's this tremendous level of American exceptionalism and hypocrisy. You know, it's like that the Arabs and the Muslims seem somehow are bad, but white Christians seem to just be, when they do an act of violence, it's just some crazy nut job. Well, with that same logic, is not ISIS just a group of wacky fucking Islamic nut jobs? Because it's a small section of that population. So, that's basically what I wanted to talk about. 
the man that committed this action in Orlando, Florida, needs to be held accountable. You know, you know, he, for you know, he basically needed to be held accountable for his crimes. The there's also reports that Orlando police may have shot a few of the uh, nightclub uh, people there. Um, the the events that just went on in Orlando, Florida, are it, it just are representative of what is definitely a problem with American with, with the American psyche. I'm not going to go on any pro-gun or anti-gun stance because, frankly, in my opinion, the anti-gun nuts are you know have ridiculous extremes and agendas the NRA and the the militant pro-gun people have their own extremes and agendas and frankly I think we need to just we need to take take a step back digest what happened before we get emotionally involved in something because that's what happens every time after a shooting there's always an emotional response that drives a certain policy and we need to take take a step to digest it not form an opinion until we fully digest it and understand what happened under take in all the facts and then form an opinion then start making policy all that sort of crap because what happened is not going to go away because you ban guns because people are still going to find ways to get them, even if that means they have to go to the black market. And frankly, if they have to go to the black market, the violence will probably get worse. But then again, we also don't want, you know, we don't want unregulated gun laws like the extremists on the right wing do, because then you're going to, then you're definitely going to have a bunch of nuts that are going to go shooting up a school or a nightclub, you know, or a theater in Paris. You know, you're going to have certain events like this. The issue is not gun control, it's gun safety. And running background checks, even possibly, maybe even getting psych eva psychiatric evaluations before you fucking, submitting a psychiatric evaluation before you buy a freaking gun. You know, I'm not saying ban assault rifles. I am saying you might want to cut back on the clips, because frankly, if you got more crazy voices in your head than bullets in the clip, maybe you shouldn't have a gun. And maybe it's not okay to have about a hundred fucking rounds in a magazine. You know, it's like, I'm, I'm a person that believes in sharpshooting. I believe in going to the gun range and stuff like that. But if you're going to be a gun owner, be responsible. Take a gun safety class. Take the time to submit a background check if you want to buy a gun. Submit a goddamn psychiatric evaluation so if that way it says that you once were 5150, no gun for you. And people want to bitch about the Second Amendment. You know what? I'm getting fucking tired of that. As a person that supports the Second Amendment myself, I also realize there's a common sense approach to that. Back in the old days, the government had muskets, and we had muskets. At one point, the government was so underfunded for guns that they had to call up people with muskets to fight for them. Now we have all this sort of crap, but the government has all sorts of weaponry. So does it really fucking matter at the end of the day? No. And... It's like, not only that, to, not to break anybody's fragile egos or hearts, but the, the Constitution has been changed 27 freaking times. And I do believe that we do need, do need a little bit of gun legislation. Not a big extreme fucking one, but we do. And frankly, I think that that's enough for this video. So... With that said, I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement. This has been NorCal Corner. Peace. Ooh, 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 ooh. You never really can fix my heart.